The 1960s were an important era in the burgeoning comedy scene. Comedians started to push boundaries like never before, and the advent and popularity of variety shows and game shows made it so they could reach wider audiences via TV appearances. And while there are some comedians from this era who generally come to mind, today we're focusing on a few you might not be as familiar with. These are performers who in their day were as big as it got, but somehow, for various reasons, aren't always talked about as much. So join us as Facts First presents the best comedians of the 60s you might not remember. Stiller and Mira Most people will know Jerry Stiller from either his iconic role as Frank Costanza on Seinfeld or as Arthur Spooner on The King of Queens. But fans of mid-century comedy will know him better as one half of the legendary duo Stiller and Mira. The other half was the brilliant Anne Mira, who was also known as being Stiller's wife. To call Stiller and Mira a strictly 1960s-era comedic duo is slightly misleading. After all, while they might have started up around the 60s, their success as a duo extended well into the 70s, and their careers, particularly Stiller's, extended decades. But while they were a duo, they were considered a mainstay on the variety show and talk show circuit. They were early members of the famous Second City Improv Troupe and the first of that bunch to actually become well-known comedians. The two actually met on a setup of sorts because Mira was on the hunt for a partner with a vaudeville act. Her talent agent set her up on a meeting with Stiller and they were a perfect match. Little did the agent realize they would match romantically too. They were married the next year. Over the course of the 60s, they became a staple on shows like the legendary Ed Sullivan Show, appearing 16 times that decade. They also appeared on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson several times. When variety shows were less in vogue during the 70s, they expanded their appearances, including a regular five-minute slot after SNL on the NBC affiliate in Washington, D.C., and several comedic advertisements on the radio for various products. Eventually, the duo branched out to more solo work as both Stiller and Mira began getting roles on various sitcoms. Mira joined Archie Bunker's place from 1979 to 82, for example. Though the duo did get a chance at their own show, The Stiller and Mira Show, it failed to gain traction. While they have since passed away, they're considered one of the premier comedic duos of the 60s and 70s. Tody Fields Tody Fields, born Sophie Feldman, was a Jewish singer and comedian originally from Hartford, Connecticut. She started off singing on the nightclub circuit, even gaining traction when she was still in high school. She eventually got the attention of Ed Sullivan, who asked her to be on his popular show in 1964. Sullivan had seen her perform at the famous Copacabana and was impressed. This was a huge break for Tody, and she was able to parlay it into many more appearances in the mid-60s, including spots on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, The Merv Griffin Show, The Mike Douglas Show, and others. She was able to cut her acting comedy chops when she appeared on a couple sitcom episodes like Here's Lucy and The Carol Burnett Show. Tody used her talent and charming personality to shine on game shows in the 60s and 70s. She was a regular guest on Hollywood Squares, for example. She also appeared several times on the game show Tattletales alongside husband George Johnston. She capped off her successful run during the 60s by releasing a humorous book called I Think I'll Start on Monday, the official 8.5 ounce mashed potato diet released in the early 70s. Sadly, she suffered from numerous health problems, including diabetes and blood clots. She had to have a leg amputated at one point and was forced to move around in a scooter. Later, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and had to have a mastectomy. She died in 1978, but not before being named Entertainer of the Year by the American Guild of Variety Artists. This video is sponsored by Zbiotics. Zbiotics is a probiotic drink that helps you feel better the day after drinking. Many people think dehydration is responsible for that morning after feeling, but it's actually due to an alcohol byproduct that builds up in the gut. Zbiotics produces an enzyme specifically to break down this byproduct and reduce the after effects of alcoholic beverages. This is real science that works, not random vitamins and plant extracts like everything else. And Zbiotics is so easy to use. Just drink a bottle of Zbiotics before your first drink of alcohol. You only need one bottle. Then drink responsibly, pace yourself, and get a good night's sleep. Thanks to Zbiotics, you can enjoy your next day feeling refreshed and ready to make the most of it. Every time I have Zbiotics before drinking, I am amazed at how good I feel the next day. With the holiday season upon us, consider gifting Zbiotics to give the gift of a better next morning. It's unique, thoughtful, and under $40. If you use the code FACTSFIRST at checkout, you can get an extra 15% off your first order. Click the link in the description or go to zbiotics.com slash FACTSFIRST and get 15% off. Shelly Berman Shelley Berman was a multi-talented performer who shined in various mediums like acting, writing, 
comedy and even teaching. He might best be known to modern audiences as Larry David's father on Curb Your Enthusiasm, but his career began decades before he took on that particular role. Born in Chicago, Shelley went to the Goodman School of Drama after serving in World War II. While there, he met his future wife, Sarah Herman, and the two eventually relocated to New York City. While there, he picked up a variety of odd jobs as he tried to start an acting career. These included stints as a speech teacher as well as a dance instructor at the famed Arthur Murray Studios. His first industry job came when he was hired to write sketches for the Steve Allen Plymouth Show. Around this time, he was also performing on a variety of sketch teams as well as developing his own solo act. This led to a burgeoning stand-up career as Berman was hired to play nightclubs in the Chicago area. He was then signed to Verve Records, who released his stand-up act as albums. This brought him immense success. His comedy albums went gold three different times and he even won the very first Grammy Award for Spoken Comedy Recording. Shelley used the success of his comedy albums to move into more TV and stage performances. He was a regular on the popular variety shows of the 60s and moved on to starring in various Broadway shows. These included shows like Damn Yankees, Fiddler on the Roof, and Guys and Dolls. In the next several decades, Berman appeared on a slew of TV shows and films. He could be seen in shows like Bewitched, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Night Court, Friends, and many others. He also appeared in films like Dementia, Meet the Fockers, The Holiday, and many others. Berman also had a successful career as a college lecturer. He was a lecturer at USC in Los Angeles on the topic of comedy writing as part of their professional writing program. Berman died in 2017 from Alzheimer's disease complications. He was 92. Flip Wilson Flip Wilson, born Clairo Wilson Jr., was an actor and comedian who shined during various TV performances in the 60s and 70s. Originally from New Jersey, Wilson got his start in comedy touring on the Chitlin Circuit. This was the name given to a number of nightclubs frequented primarily by black audiences and black entertainers. Eventually, he was able to parlay that success into being a regular performer at the legendary Apollo Theater in New York City. His big break came in a slightly unexpected way, however. While on The Tonight Show, legendary comic Red Fox was asked by Johnny Carson to name the current funniest comic. Fox said it was Flip Wilson, and Carson immediately booked Wilson to perform on the show. He became a regular performer on Carson's show, as well as The Ed Sullivan Show. After appearing in a number of shows as a guest performer, such as Here's Lucy and Laughing, Wilson was eventually given his own variety show. It was called The Flip Wilson Show, and it not only made Wilson a household name, but it garnered him accolades like a Golden Globe and two Emmys. Perhaps most importantly, it cemented Wilson's name in the history books, as he was the first African American to act as host for a successful variety show on TV. It was so momentous, Time Magazine not only had Wilson grace the cover, but they referred to him as TV's first black superstar. He continued performing comedy, even releasing several comedy albums. His album, The Devil Made Me Buy This Dress, garnered him a Grammy Award. He was a regular performer through the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He made many TV appearances and starred in now cult classic movies like The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh and Uptown Saturday Night. Sadly, he died in 1998 from cancer. These comedians were all incredibly talented and successful, and in their heyday, they were all famous enough to be household names, but sometimes even big names get lost in the shuffle of history. That's why it's important to remember the contributions they made to the world of comedy, TV, films, and more. And of course, there are the important social aspects, such as the pioneering work of Flip Wilson as an early face in the world of successful black comedians. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you familiar with any of these comedians from the 60s? Do you think you'd find their acts funny today? Or does comedy change too much over time for that? Let us know in the comments section below.